While the engine is running and the heaters are operating, insert the tip of the back rack test pump into one of the vent pipe caps. Pump the tester 10 complete strokes. Remove the test paper from the test pump, but be careful the tip will be hot. And compare the spot on the paper with the included scale. The ideal is for the test to produce a spot that is nearly equal to a 1 on the scale. As you can see from this comparison, we have some tuning to do. The correct nozzle size is critical to the proper operation of the heater units in the maxi heat. Too large a nozzle size will cause the fuel-air mixture to become too rich, creating excess smoke and soot and reducing efficiency. Make certain that the engine and heaters are turned off and not operating before continuing with the next step. To replace the fuel nozzle, first remove the two screws securing the back of the transformer. Then flip the transformer toward the outside of the trailer. With the 7 16 open end wrench, remove the flare nut that holds the fuel line in place and carefully move the fuel line aside. Use the flat blade screwdriver to loosen the rib nut securing the fuel rail and remove the nut. Carefully pull the fuel rail to the side to clear the mounting hole and then pull it straight out of the combustion chamber. Next use the flat blade screwdriver to loosen the electrode clamps. Move the electrodes out of the way to clear the fuel nozzle. With the 3 quarter inch and 5 8 inch opened in wrenches, carefully loosen and remove the nozzle. Note the filter that is built into each nozzle. Consult the chart above the right door opening on the side of the maxi heat to determine the correct nozzle size for your elevation. The size is noted on each nozzle. This one is a 3.0 GPM used only for operation at or near sea level. Most applications in the mountain states will require 2.0 to 2.25 gallon per minute nozzles most elevations east of the Rockies will use 2.5 to 2.75 nozzles. Thread the new properly sized nozzle into the end of the fuel rail. Use the 3 quarter and 5 eighths wrenches to snug the nozzle in place. Use care not to cross thread or over tighten it. Adjust the electrodes so that they are one quarter inch above the center of the nozzle, one eighth of an inch out from the end of the nozzle, and five thirty seconds apart at the tip. Electrode clamps and then reinstall the fuel rail into the combustion chamber. Finally, flip the transformer back into position and reinstall and tighten the two screws that were removed earlier. It's also a good idea to adjust the air band at this time. 
First, loosen the screw that secures the airband clamp and then move the airband accordingly. Refer to the chart above the right hand door for an approximate band setting. In this case, since we're using a smaller nozzle, we'll reduce the opening in the airband. The fuel pressure gauge is also a good tool to determine if the heater is operating properly. Use this to determine that the fuel pressure is 140 PSI. Be sure to close the ball valve when you're not using the pressure gauge to reduce the possibility of a fuel spill if the gauge should become damaged. Next, start the engine and the heaters. When the heaters come up to operating temperature and the fan comes on, take another sample from the vent pipes using the Bacharach smoke test pump. Be certain to pump the tester 10 full strokes. Success! This time we've achieved a 1 on the scale. Repeat the adjustment process for the second heater. When that process is complete, your heater will be fully tuned and ready to efficiently and dependably provide clean, breathable, heated air to your work site. Refer to the operator's manual included with your heater for operating, maintenance, and troubleshooting instructions. For service or warranty questions, please contact our service department at 800-562-1373. Be sure to have the serial number of your Maxi ready when you call.